Up next, big or small, this patch has it all for these curious kindergartners. And we get on beat with a matter of the heart at a middle school in our district. All this and more. Frisco ISD TV starts now. Welcome to this edition of Frisco ISD TV. I'm Isha Codwell. And I'm Morgan Yarnick. Thanks for being with us. We start with It's Elementary, My Dear, where Jamie Miller follows a trail of kindergartners on their big orange adventure. Kindergartners at Shawnee Trail Elementary followed a recent lesson back to its roots. We got the dirt on their class trip. Kindergarten's been studying the life cycle of a pumpkin. It's kind of integrated into our um, lessons that we do with science and math and our literacy. The Big Orange Pumpkin Farm in Salina helps students bring their studies from the classroom to the garden. Um, today they actually saw part of the stages of the life cycle. They saw the blossoms and the green pumpkins and the orange pumpkins and the vines. It's really a hands-on learning opportunity for them and it was fun for them to actually see that today while we were here at the pumpkin patch. Kindergartners shared where they think pumpkins come from. A seed, a farm, leaves, flowers, pumpkin patch. And when it came to choosing which pumpkin to take home, yeah. students had different reasons. Because it's fat. Because he can make faces out of it. Because it's the dirtiest one. Students shared their favorite part about the trip. Picking our pumpkin. Having a hayride. I feeded the animals. The seed has been planted, and now these kindergartners know where this orange fruit comes from. I'm Jamie Miller for Frisco ISD TV. Thanks, Jamie. Do you know where pumpkins come from? Of course. Pumpkins come from a seed. Hopefully now they know the truth. In the middle of it all, I took a trip to find out why students were mad about supporting a cause. Griffin Middle School's National Junior Honor Society is head over heels for a worthy cause. We take a look under the hat. The Mad Hatter's Drive is a drive where kids can help kids. We donate hats for kids who are going through cancer treatments, and it's from the Tara Reed Foundation. Kristen Parks created tags for students to deck out their headgear. I wanted them to be like happy and att uh, attract people, so I put a quote so they'll know the purpose for it. And I put a Mad Hatter's hat so it'd look very cheerful. We collected a little over 350 hats on our campus. Our National Junior Honor Society students started the drive and then all of our students participated. Students added custom donation labels to show others where the hats came from. We're taking the majority of the hats to the Children's Medical Center in Dallas and then we're going to also take some hats to the uh, cancer support community. We just wanted to get as many hats as we could. We wanted every student to donate a hat just to touch a kid who's going through cancer. Hats off to the Mad Hatters. I'm Misha Codwell for Frisco ISD TV. In higher learning, Millicent Messina sheds light on a student who's inspired by a dark genre of music. This TNT wants to explode in an industry that makes people move. Ears are opening up as Taylor Thomas dubs his way through electronic music. It's called Dubstep and is a series of electronic sounds that has Taylor making waves all the way to a record label. I'm signed to Soulful Edge Records. It's based in Los Angeles. I haven't even met the guys. I met them online. Um, basically, I was talking to this other guy that was remixing one of my really old songs, Groove Machine. And um, he said he could hook me up with a label if I wanted to release my new song, uh, Paranormal Activity. Taylor says one of the co-owners of the record label has mentored him along the way, showing him ways to improve his music. His love for electronics started at a young age. I personally like Taylor's music a lot. Um, I've known him for a very long time, ever since we were little. And he used to make 
uh, circuits that would play um, just beeps and sounds and stuff. So now when he's making electronic music, it really kind of fits with his personality. I really love the fact that Taylor's a DJ because uh, he'll make music for me for like videos and he'll DJ at my parties and he'll just be like, a, it's really fun, you know, it gives us something to do. Thomas wants to bring a neoclassical vibe to electronic music. Most of the stuff when people think of electronic dance music, they think, you know, kick, snare, kick, snare, some hi-hats in there and then some bass that's really kind of long and boring. What I like to do is I like to influence classical music into my own productions, uh, such as like some piano or some harpsichord, some real instruments, but then I can change the sound of it completely and then drop this bass that's really meticulous and spend really large amounts of time, like three hours working on about a second of sound, trying to get the right idea in my head. Family and friends show their support for Thomas's career. I buy all of the songs that he puts up to purchase and I like post about it, tell all my friends to buy it, write a review about it on iTunes or wherever it's out. Well, I, I think we support Taylor's DJ experience and, and we've been um, excited for him to do to, to the endeavor. I mean, I don't think his type of music is our favorite type of music, but we know that he's a youth and that music musical interests change. So I think we're very supportive. Very. Being inside has proven not to be a waste of time. I'm a, still a huge geek. I built my own computer, and now it's broken, which is ironic. I'm always on the computer. I'm always trying to find something new to do with my sound. It's an investment in your time and money by spending all this time just indoors, not talking to anybody, and then just the next day going out to play one of these huge festivals, playing for thousands of people that, you know, you would have never even thought you would whenever you're just making some little tune on your computer in your bedroom. With a support system in place and a passion to succeed, Thomas's future is bound to be electric. I'm Melissa Messina for Frisco ISD TV. Thanks, Millicent. I hope Taylor Thomas makes a bang in the music industry. Me too. I'm going to buy his song on iTunes. Jacob Rhymes has a twist on a designer for a local hockey team and high tech happenings. At the Dr. Pepper Star Center in Frisco, a tornado of change has swept through a local hockey team. The work of career and technical education student Weston Dunham. I originally got started in the graphic design program, formerly known as the Advertising Design Program. It's with the Kate Center when I was a sophomore. According to the state, there was a Graphic Design 3, but they had never created a program as a part of the district. There was no defined curriculum for Graphic Design 3. Graphic Design and Illustration instructor Diana Bacon has taught Dunham for three years. I think he's very driven um, and passionate about design. Um, he has a very clean and classic style um, and can adapt to almost every situation. Um, he, he is interested in graphic design um, and so he tends to really put his heart into his projects. Um, initially, um, when he won the City of Frisco Sister Cities logo for the mayor, that's um, when I um, really realize that he has some talent to do this professionally. The uh, Kate Center along with Liberty High School created a program in which I um, have an internship and I work for the credits that I would normally would receive in a class. The Texas Tornado needed their program fixed and they had basically just been told by a designer that he did not have the time to um, make the program for them so they were very open to having a designer, especially one they did not have to pay. Um, and I went ahead and I brought in my portfolio and they loved what I was making and they loved what I was doing. And I basically started from there. The program is a first for the district and demonstrates the CTE Center's focus on preparing students for careers. Dunham's co-workers say they're pleased with his contributions. Well, Wes kind of came to us uh, because one of my jobs, along with broadcasting, is I had to design the game program that we give out to all the fans here that come to the game uh, and I have little to no design experience whatsoever so luckily uh, we, Wes was able to come to us and I mean his job his, what he did is far and away anything better than I what I could have done I was really excited and happy to, to have him on board and, and he's he's done a great job so far. Weston sees his internship as an opportunity to showcase his skill set and maybe learn a few things along the way. Most of what I've been making has been their 2011-2012 uh, program, which is my first print published piece of work. There's going to be about 15,000 of those printed. Um, 
and it's been a very long process. We've been doing that for most of the time I've been here. It also allows me to really get uh, focused on what I would be doing when I'm an adult if I was to work in this field. I'm Jacob Rimes for Frisco ISD TV. If you were in a life-threatening situation, how would you respond? Kayla Kowalik uncovers an event that has sent shockwaves throughout the district. I just remember walking to class and then um, falling over and then the helicopter ride. This heart-stopping moment at Moss Middle School put one child's life at risk, but may save hundreds of others. Initially, we thought that she was having a seizure, so as I come up on the scene, I'm thinking she's having a seizure. Um, and then we looked at her a little bit more closely and like, uh, this isn't right. So we went back to training. The scene is safe. Uh, Kylie, are you okay? Are you okay? And then look, listen, and feel, and then just step by step, just like the training told us. The students and teachers who saved Kylie were honored in an assembly with much credit given to a machine. Well, an AED stands for an Automated External Defibrillator. It just uh, basically jump starts hard and, and gets everything working again like it should be. And it's very important. I mean, it's just, uh, it's proven in Kylie Shea's case where in time of emergency, a cardiac emergency at that saves a lot. As a result of this incident, Frisco ISD has enhanced their preparedness concerning the use of automated external defibrillators. Since this event has happened, we've added some more uh, AEDs. We kind of stepped it up a bit on adding more. We, we had enough, but we just want to have an extra set of security. All Frisco ISD campuses are equipped with AEDs, and FISD coaches, nurses, band directors, and even bus drivers are trained on how to use them. Procedures are in place to ensure that all AEDs are ready for the unexpected. Uh, the nurses do a monthly check and make sure that our pads are current, our battery is, is current, and that sort of thing, but we're really double checking. Individual campuses have stepped up their AED training as well. What the staff was able to do was to take a tour and see where the fire extinguishers were, the AED machines and the oxygen machines were. We got a lot of equipment and so the teachers need to know where they were. And then they get an opportunity with the AED trainers specifically to be able to unpackage them and then try them out on the AED trainer mannequins. Cunningham feels the training is a priority, no matter the cost. It's important for us as a school district to make sure that we we put everything at our fingertips to be able to do that. Dr. Reedy said yes is expensive, but if it saves one life, then it's worth it. He's already done that several times here in the district, and if you look across the nation, several times there as well. With every beat of Kylie's heart, some feel we are reminded of the importance of proper CPR and AED training. Frisco ISD's push for increased awareness and training for all teachers could pay off in the future. I'm Kayla Kowalik for Frisco ISD TV. We're so glad she's okay. Yeah, that must have been scary, but a great outcome. That wraps up our show. Join us next time to see what middle school in Frisco many in Texas are watching. And find out what many stirred up for a challenge. I'm Morgan Yarnick. And I'm Misha Codwell. Thanks for watching.